If you missed my last video on ABGs, be sure to check it out in order to better understand what we'll be talking about in today's case study on COPD pneumonia. This case study emphasizes the important constructs of clinical reasoning that includes recognizing what clinical data is relevant and what will be your resultant nursing priorities. Here is our introductory scenario from a patient who presents to the emergency department. Joan Walker is an 84-year-old female who has had a productive cough of green phlegm that started four days ago that continues to persist. She was started three days ago on prednisone 40 milligrams daily and azithromycin 250 milligrams for the last five days by her clinic physician. Though she has had intermittent chills, she had a fever last night of 102 degrees and more difficulty breathing during the night. She has been using her albuterol inhaler every one to two hours with no improvement, so she called 911 and is now in your emergency department and you are the nurse responsible for her care. So let's quickly look and say what clinical data is relevant in this initial scenario and why. Well, let's look at her productive cough of green phlegm. Why is it green? Anytime you have color of yellow to green, it is dead neutrophils because of a, usually a bacterial infectious process. That is a clinical red flag. Secondly, she was started on prednisone and antibiotics and has not improved. As you know, prednisone is an anti-inflammatory given commonly in the context of COPD exacerbation, antibiotics for the infection. She's not improving. She had a fever of 102 degrees. The question is why? What does a fever represent? As you know, if you know your inflammatory and immunity content, it is, an, it is the inflammatory response increasing the temperature to increase the amount of neutrophils, the first responders to an infectious process. This is a clinical red flag of an infection that needs to be recognized. And finally, she's having difficulty breathing despite using the albuterol inhaler every one to two hours. Now, if you know your mechanism of action of albuterol, it's a beta-2 agonist. It's sympathetic nervous system beta receptors on the bronchioles that should dilate and open up the airways and improve ventilation, which will improve oxygenation. Is it working? No. You now collect your first set of vital signs. Her temperature is now 103.2. Her pulse is 110. Her respiratory rate is 30. Her blood pressure is 178 over 96 and her O2 sats are 86%. When you do the pain scale, she has got three over 10 pain generalized over her right chest. What's the clinical data that's relevant now? That's an essential component of clinical reasoning. She's got the fever that's increased. Her pulse is too high. Her respiratory rate is too high. And her O2 sats are too low. Let's look at her physical assessment. You now get your stethoscope on her and you listen to her and you assess her. General appearance, she's anxious and in distress. Respiratory, she's using her accessory intercostal muscles. Her breath sounds are diminished bilaterally with scattered expiratory wheezing. She's pale, hot, and dry with... Normal heart sounds, her pulses are strong. Neurologically, she's alert and oriented times four. GI, her abdominal is soft, non-tender, and her skin integrity is dry with no tenting present. What clinical data is relevant in this scenario? As we look at it, primarily we're focusing on the respiratory status. She has intercostal retractions, why? If you understand your physiology, that is accessory muscle use, where the body is using the skeletal muscle to try to improve ventilation and oxygenation. The doctor orders a chest x-ray. The chest x-ray shows a left lower lobe infiltrate with hypoventilation present in the lung fields. That infiltrate is confirming the presence of likely a pneumonia process. The doctor orders a CBC. Her white count is 14.5, her hemoglobin is 13.3, platelets are 217, her neutrophils are 92%, and her bands are 5. What clinical data is relevant here? Well, if we understand again the inflammatory immune process, her white count is elevated as well as her neutrophils way over 90%. That is that left shift that is telling us that her body is in overdrive kicking out neutrophils and first responders to fight an acute bacterial infection. We have a problem 
Houston. The doctor now orders a set of arterial blood gases, or ABGs. The pH is 7.25, her PCO2 is 68, her PO2 is 52, and her bicarb is 36, and O2 stats of 84%. Let's look at this step by step and determine what our interpretation is so we can correctly identify is there a problem present with our ABGs. Number one, what's our pH? Our pH is 7.25, clearly acidotic. What's our PCO2? 68. Clearly 35 to 45 is normal. We are acidotic. So we have an acidosis present and it's respiratory driven. Let's look at our bicarb. It's 36. It's actually elevated. Why is it elevated? Again, the most common reason in the context of a patient with known COPD is CO2 retention that is chronic and the kidneys are compensating by elevating the bicarb that are secreted by the kidneys to therefore compensate. What about our PO2 step four? Our PO2 is too low, it's 52. Mm. We should be 80 to 100. Therefore, we are struggling to ventilate as well as diffuse the CO2 and get it out of the system. We have a clear problem of ventilation and our patient is in distress. Our interpretation, respiratory acidosis that is clearly not compensated. So now let's put this picture all together and let's think like a nurse and reflect on these as we interpret the data what are we going to now identify as number one? What is the primary problem that our patient is presenting with? You don't need to be a physician to recognize. We've got a problem of ventilation and that it's essentially a pneumonia with a COPD exacerbation. Number two, what will be the nursing priorities that will now guide your plan of care based on the correct interpretation of this relevant clinical data? Now, this is where you can let go of NANDA because we don't use that taxonomy in clinical practice. We hold it very loosely, but many programs tend to hold it way too tightly. I say this, we have a patient who has respiratory distress. I want my students to recognize that as the primary problem. Therefore, our plan of care really captures the essence of respiratory distress. My patient is not just kind of having like, for example, if we use NANDA, impaired gas exchange. That is not really giving me a sense. Yes, is that, is that accurate? Yes. Does it reflect the salience and the dynamics of the current scenario? Absolutely not. Even ineffective airway clearance or anxiety. Those are all relevant to a point, but yet recognize our patient has an AB problem. That's where we must put our energies and respiratory distress captures the essence of this problem. Then we look at once the priority of respiratory distress is correctly identified, what are the interventions that the nurse will do? Well, the obvious need is increase oxygenation. This patient needs oxygen even if she has COPD, whether it be six liters, a face mask, may even require BiPAP, the mask that gives her both inspiratory pressure as well as CPAP, continuous positive and expiratory pressure to ventilate and keep that alveoli open to improve oxygenation. Sit this patient up, decrease anxiety are all classic interventions when you identify the priority and state it correctly. And finally, when we look at priorities with clinical reasoning, we have the nursing priority, we also have the educational priority. That is something that we're not going to go in depth at this point, but what you, the nurse must do in this scenario is to teach and to inform the patient of what is taking place right now to decrease anxiety. Tell the patient everything that you're doing and why you're doing it. I'm gonna put you on this mask. This is gonna help you breathe easier. I'm gonna sit you up in the bed because it'll help you breathe easier. Be assuring, use comfort, use touch, use presence, be available to your patient patient and use the art of nursing as well as the physiologic interventions to provide authentic, holistic care, even in a crisis. Thinking like a nurse is a skill that needs to be practiced, just like sterile technique. 
in the safety of the classroom. Help develop this essential nurse thinking skill. I've developed a series of new case studies titled Clinical Reasoning 1, 2, 3. Three case studies that complement each other with the scenario with three different lenses. Just as you look at a car from more than one viewpoint, when you see it on the, on the internet in an ad, we look at nurse thinking in three different lenses. The first one we just did today was recognizing relevance and priorities. I have two more. Check out the link on this YouTube for more information. If you found this video helpful, share with another person or student or colleague. More importantly, subscribe to my channel. I have new content coming out on an ongoing basis and I don't want you to miss out.